A great way to increase your radio station signal power is to build multiple antenna stacks, otherwise known as an antenna array. Today we will look at FM transmitter antenna arrays that you can build yourself. We look at how it's done, what parts are needed and when to avoid building an antenna array. If you do some research on FM antenna array construction, you will go down a rabbit hole of technical theory that you may never make it out of. The theoretical study of antenna arrays is one of the most complicated and often confusing forms of engineering around. This video intends to give a simpler explanation and some practical ways to build antenna arrays without having to rack your brain with complicated equations and theories. When most newcomers to building radio stations decide to build an array, it is because their transmitter does not provide enough power, so it needs to be increased by adding more antennas. In some cases, people simply want to run the transmitter at a lower power level to extend the life of the transmitter. Whatever your reason, the antenna stack or array can double and quadruple the output power of the FM transmitter. This is by using a 2-stack and a 4-stack. In theory, it is possible to build even bigger stacks such as an 8-stack, but it actually becomes impractical beyond 4 antennas because of the sheer size of the antenna stack. A 4-stack antenna is at least 8 times the size of a single antenna length. Unless you have a massive antenna mast that is completely vertical, this is not the way to go. You would be better off buying a transmitter that is more powerful. Let's look now at building a simple two-stack antenna array. The parts you will need are two antennas, a pole at least four times the length of the antenna, and the most important part is what is called a harness. This is essentially a few pieces of coaxial cable joined together. You may be wondering what this strange collection of wires does. To understand the importance of the harness, we need to see how the antennas are connected together and how they work together in unison to amplify the radio signal. When two antennas fire off the radio signal at the same time, at a certain point the two signals will intersect. It is where these signals intersect that the signal will be amplified by adding the two signals together or cancelled out by the two signals being in opposite polarity when they meet. In the two-stack antenna array, the FM dipoles are spaced half a wavelength apart. To understand why, we can draw a full wavelength across the antennas. As you can see, at exactly a half-wave spacing, the two antennas are at the exact same polarity at the same time. This is when the two signals can work together, but if you feed the two antennas out of phase, they will not be working together even if they are spaced correctly because when, for example, the positive part of the wave reaches the one antenna, the negative part will reach the other antenna because the radio signal has further to travel along the cable to the second antenna. To fix this, we use a harness that has two arms that are each about a quarter wavelength long. This allows the radio signal to reach both antennas at the same time. These cables must not be tuned or adjusted but simply connected to each antenna. You could make these cables yourself but most people have found it simply easier to buy pre-made harnesses as getting the impedance matching right is very difficult. They are not tunable, so in essence, as long as the lengths of the two arms of the harness are exactly the same length and approximately a quarter of a wavelength long, they can work together. You can simply place a T-piece cable adapter where all three cables intersect, creating the harness as a big T-piece cable. This is simple enough for a two-stack array, but a little more complicated for a four-stack, but we will get into that in a minute. Something important to mention here is when you are setting up your antennas, the spacing between the dipole antenna and the pole they are mounted on needs to be exactly a quarter wavelength long. The reason for this is that the reflection from the pole can help or hurt the signal. At exactly a quarter wavelength spacing, the reflected signal from the pole can add a dB or two of gain, but if the spacing is wrong, it can actually cancel out some of the signal. To understand how to work out the half wavelength and quarter wavelength, be sure to watch my video on FM antenna tuning. The link is in the description. 
That video will show you how to calculate the exact wavelengths for your transmitter frequency and to tune your antennas correctly as well. Speaking of antenna tuning, it is important to tune both FM antennas separately so they are resonant on their own before you try to match them in an array. If the antennas are not tuned correctly, you will run into all sorts of problems and no matter how well you install the stack, you will be getting very strange readings on your SWR meter and your signal will be less than great. Assuming you have all the parts and tuned antennas, you place the two dipoles half a wavelength apart. You must run coaxial cable of exactly the same length from each dipole antenna. They do not need to be a specific wavelength long, but they must be exactly the same length as each other. Neatly looping the extra cable length of the lower antenna away from the dipole on the main pole. Then check your SWR on your meter to see if all is well. The spacing between the antennas can be adjusted to angle the signal and create down tilt, but this is more complicated and not for this video. For the 4-stack array, the spacing is the same with half a wavelength between each dipole. The main difference is the harness length. The harness is slightly different as each pair of arms of the harness is separated by another section of about an eighth of a wavelength so that the length between the two pairs is about a quarter of a wavelength. The same process applies though of tuning each antenna separately and then spacing the dipoles from the pole and from each other. For both the 2-stack and 4-stack, the coaxial cables coming from each dipole needs to be exactly the same length. This is to ensure that each antenna fires off at the exact same time, keeping all the antennas in phase. While it is possible to make the harness yourself, I would recommend you purchase pre-made harnesses from an antenna company. The small additional cost will reduce the stress of setting up an antenna stack. Would you like to build your own homemade FM dipole antenna? Now that you know how to build an FM antenna array, why not make a pair or even four of your own FM dipoles? In my next video, I'll show you how to build an FM dipole completely from scratch that you can tune to be resonant. That means it will probably give you a better signal than many FM antennas for sale on sites like eBay because many of those antennas can't be tuned this antenna can be made from materials you can find at any hardware store. That means it is quite cheap to make and the parts are easy to find. So be sure to subscribe and be notified of that video. And if you're excited to build your own FM antenna, let me know in the chat. To tune your antennas correctly, be sure to watch this video and to learn more about FM transmitters and antennas for your radio station, be sure to click here.